Bush. Let's go. Yeah. Let's go. I got that juice. juice. No AP. She got it, Juice. I got you, Juicy Entertainment News for Wednesday. As the R. Kelly trial continues, courtroom updates have become increasingly disturbing as witnesses and alleged victims have claimed that R. Kelly has done everything from entrapping teenagers uh, to sexually abusing young men and forcing sexual partners to write fake blackmail letters. One of the most recent witnesses to take the stand was Suzette Mayweather, who is an ex-employee of R. Kelly, who used to work for him alongside her twin sister for more than a year. On the stand, she claimed that R. Kelly once punished some of his girlfriends who were twerking for cake at uh, his birthday party in 2016. He got upset about the twerking and made them fight each other. Um, he also got extremely angry with Suzette one time when uh, she had conversed with one of his girlfriends. She is now the fourth former employee of R. Kelly to testify against him and uh, her testimony aligns with that of other ex employees, especially in regards to the singer's alleged strict rules about interacting with his girlfriends. Now, R. Kelly has pleaded not guilty to all of the charges brought against him. However, these testimonies from witnesses and former employees continue to surface, and it is not looking good for him. This is so fantastic. Our very own Sir Sidney Poitier is being honored once again. The 10,000 square foot lobby of the Academy Museum of Motion Pictures, which will be open to the public um, officially today, is being named after him. The Sidney Poitier Grand Lobby was made possible through a campaign that was supported by Ambassador Nicole Yvonne and Netflix co-CEO and Academy Museum Board of Trustees Chair Ted Sarandos, as well as Tyler Perry and Oprah Winfrey. And a statement released by the museum director said, it is an incredible honor to name our grand lobby the nucleus of the Academy Museum in celebration of Sir Sidney Poitier, whose legacy of humanitarian efforts and groundbreaking artistry continues to inspire us all. Amy Winehouse, there is a biopic in the works. It will be based on Daphne Barak's book called Saving Amy, which is based on six months of filming that's comprised of 40 hours of footage, exclusive photos and notes that were completed with Winehouse and her family in the last three years of Amy's life. Um, Daphne followed her. And uh, the sad thing, of course, you know, Amy died from alcohol poisoning in July 2011 at the tender age of 27, just so young. And her personal life was really volatile, filled with drug and alcohol abuse and, of course, the abusive relationship with her boyfriend turned husband, Blake. Um, Amy died from alcohol poisoning. And uh, after it seemed like she was starting to, you know, get a little bit better, we thought that uh, she was on her way. But, uh, of course, uh, sadly enough, she passed. And after her death, her album Back to Black continued to sell and has since become the UK's second best selling album of the 21st century with more than 20 million copies sold to date. And that's your Juicy Entertainment News for Wednesday. Make sure you lock it in again tomorrow. Tomorrow for more of the juice. Some Amy Winehouse for you right now. Kiss 96.